Good afternoon, everyone, and good morning to those of you on the West Coast. So yeah, so a business checkup, you know, like a doctor, uh, when they ask you dozens of questions about your personal health, uh, a business can be viewed really similarly. Uh, your business is made up of a lot of complex systems. Uh, if any of them are compromised, it can put your business health at risk. So this presentation is, is meant to help business leaders by offering questions and insights uh, into a lot of these systems so that you're considering your business's health from points of view that sometimes can go overlooked. Uh, so think of this presentation as taking your business to the doctor for a checkup. Uh, hopefully something in here will trigger a, a response and ultimately an action that will help you build a better business for 2022 and beyond. So first, real quick, just a little bit about me. Uh, my job is real simple. I work with clients to help make their businesses go. Uh, I help business leaders gain clarity uh, in what it is they want to achieve, find the path forward towards their vision, uh, and provide tools and coaching to help make those dreams a reality. Uh, for me personally, I have over 20 years of, of business experience in both manufacturing uh, and industrial equipment services, uh, but I actually work with all kinds of organizations, uh, right down to nonprofits. So the business health checklist beyond the numbers. So each of these topics represents key items that may not be core to your business's product or service, but as a leader of a business, large or small, you're ultimately responsible for ensuring that each phase of your business is operating smoothly. When things are going well, they largely go unnoticed. But when any phase of your business encounters a problem, you're the first person that employees look to in terms of who's responsible and what's being do done to resolve the issues. Uh, it can be sort of thankless uh, in terms of a business leader's role, but I assure you it's necessary to have these locked down. Uh, as we go through this presentation, uh, I'll try to offer some interesting stories or statistics to help put things into perspective. So let's get right into it. So how do you manage safety? So for those of you running a facility with employees all the way down to those uh, working in a home office uh, like myself, uh, safety has to be at the front of the line. So the first stat of the day, in 2020, OSHA collected reports of 2.1 million non-fatal injuries in the workplace. Unfortunately, not enough businesses are putting appropriate safety measures uh, in, in place. Recently, uh, I was talking with a friend who took a new job running a small manufacturing shop here in New Hampshire. Uh, he sat down on his first day with his management team and they were discussing uh, where to add signage in the facility demonstrating that protective eyewear was required. So as the managers debated the number and location of these signs, uh, my friend was looking out the window into the shop and, and seeing that many of the employees actually weren't wearing safety glasses at all. Uh, his point to the managers was simple. The number of signs and location of signs doesn't much matter if safety isn't a part of your culture. So some basic tips for all of you to begin installing or improving uh, your own uh, company's safety culture. Make sure you have appropriate safety manuals for your business. Review it regularly during your meetings. Have measurements in place to measure safety, like recording of accidents, and share the data with your team. Anyone and everyone should have an evacuation plan. In the event of an emergency, is there a known rally point? For those of you working at home, if you had to get out of the house quickly with several other people, does everyone in the house know where to meet up once they're outside? Make sure your emergency medical supplies aren't expired and are easily located. Make sure your personal protection devices are appropriate for the business and are clearly identified as being mandatory. Make sure fire extinguishers and emergency lighting are checked on a regular basis. Uh, for those of you renting a facility, uh, your landlord's probably managing this, uh, make sure it's getting done regularly. Uh, and if you own the building, make sure you have a qualified vendor managing this for you. Uh, consider things like offering CPR uh, certification to employees. Consider putting security measures in place so that if accidents happen, there's video evidence. At the very least, uh, capturing video uh, of, of accidents may allow you to take uh, faster corrective actions. We could spend an entire day talking about safety, but the message is simple. Make sure it's part of your culture, uh, whether you're working remote or in your facility. 
how does your business manage HR? So people are typically the number one cost in your business, as much as 70% of a business's total costs. It should be managed that way. Small and medium-sized businesses often struggle with HR. Some business owners think that making payroll and putting up a poster covering current labor laws qualifies as sufficient HR. Ensuring payroll is done properly and that labor laws are being complied with and benefits are being administered properly. Honestly, it's a full-time job and it can be overwhelming at times. So here's a quick story for you. Uh, one time my family and I were on vacation with friends. So there we are, we're sitting out on the Lido deck of this nice cruise ship, enjoying some cocktails in the sunshine, uh, which would be great right now uh, if you're in the, the New England winter like me. Uh, but at any rate, uh, my friend says to me, I'll be back in a couple of hours. So kind of curious, I, I looked at him, I said, well, where are you going? What are you, what are you doing? Uh, and he said, I have to go run payroll for my business. And I was totally blown away by that. You know, at first it was easy to, to be impressed with his dedication, uh, but then I realized uh, that he had no other choice. And, and honestly, there's so many options out there to manage payroll and benefits and so forth uh, via HR experts, uh, yet he chose to take it with him on vacation. So every business needs a plan to cover payroll, certainly, uh, as well as benefits and ensure that current labor laws are, and best practices are being um, managed properly. Um, but beyond that, I want to talk to you a minute uh, about your employees. Uh, take a look at that statistic in the graphic. $223 billion spent on dealing with employees turning over in the workplace due to culture issues over the past five years. Why is that? When a person goes to work every day and hates the environment, the people, the management, etc., I think to myself that that's avoidable. So here's how I see it. Employees want opportunity. They want recognition. There's plenty of studies out there that demonstrate an employee's willingness to stay at a company despite it might not being the highest paying job around because they like where they go, what they do, they like who they're working with, and there's good benefits in place. So ask yourself this, what are you doing to provide the best culture possible that fosters opportunity and recognition? Have you considered initiatives to support the local community to help build your culture in the, in the workplace? Are you planning for the future and identifying next generation talent and leadership? Are you offering training to them? Are you providing regular performance reviews with clearly defined goals? Are your compensation plans fair and have you checked? All of these things lead to employee retention, which is one of, if not the uh, most challenging issue for business owners today. You have to work hard to make sure that the employee base in your industry sees you as being a really good employer. If you have that reputation, retention won't be quite such an issue. Okay, so how close are you with your financial professionals? Every business has a bank account, right? But if I asked you questions like, do you know who you'd call in an emergency for banking needs? Would you actually be able to answer that question? Do you have a sense of how increased business would impact your cash flow? And have you considered transactional costs when it comes to collecting and processing payments? Your banker and other financial professionals should be able to help you with all of that. We all know cash is king, but do you know that what your financial professionals can do for you in terms of supporting your business? The best ones are really extremely well connected in the local community. They've worked with and vetted countless partners in order to offer their clients the most chance of being successful. So here's a stat in the graphic for you. According to a US bank study, a whopping 82% of businesses that failed cited cash flow problems as a major factor in their failure. Cash flow isn't just about the amount of money, but it's also about timing. It's critical. Besides bankers, other great resources for managing cash flow are dedicated bookkeepers and CPAs. If you're meeting regularly with these partners, it gives your business the best chance to receive the financial support it needs. Are you actively managing your facility and its costs? I love this one because it can represent a lot of savings to your business if you're operating in a facility. 
In my career, I was able to learn from experts that knew how to squeeze every dollar out of facility related costs. And I was able to save tens of thousands of dollars in operating costs simply by paying attention. So let's talk about some of those details. First, do you know what competitive lease rates are for your type of facility? Are you working with a commercial realtor that can help you negotiate the best deals? Before you sign your first lease or your next lease extension, engage with an expert that represents your interests, not just the, the building's interests. Next, make sure you're using your space efficiently. And here's an example. I once took over a business that used 25 to 30% of its available square footage to store inventory and junk that was never gonna turn into a sale. When that lease was up, we moved and we downsized. We cleared out the junk, we wrote down the bad inventory, and we dropped that additional square footage. So before you sign that next extension or think about filling, our, you know, filling up your space with stuff that you, know, you don't need, purge it. Things that you're never gonna use, get rid of it. Not only is it going to provide you a nicer working environment, but it could save you tons of money that flows to your bottom line. Utility costs, another big cost driver in, in your business. There's energy experts out there that will look at your energy costs and devise plans to save you money. It only requires that you engage them and get an audit done. Typically, those audits don't cost you anything. Again, the savings will, are, is going to drop right to the bottom line. If you're in a commercial building, did you know that approximately 17% of your energy cost is just from lighting? Speak with an expert that knows the energy industry and you'll be able to save. And a couple of other facility related topics to consider. Do you have appropriate security systems in place? Are your employees happy with the overall cleanliness of your facility? Have you quoted out the security and cleaning services to ensure that you're getting the best value for your money? It's important to make sure that your team is comfortable, feeling safe, but also that you're spending the appropriate amount of money on those services. So marketing is an interesting conversation. So many businesses lump sales and marketing into just one category. And I know because for a long time I was one of them. The reality is that marketing requires a specific strategy to your business in order to create sales opportunities. There's so many ways to market your business these days. And a lot of business leaders simply think that putting up a website and sending a salesperson out into the world is enough. So I'm here to tell you if marketing isn't a focus of your business, then it's entirely possible that you're losing sales opportunities every single day. You should know your brand. You should utilize all the tools available to support that brand, social media, websites, printed collateral, and have metrics in place to measure their effectiveness. So here's some data to give you a different perspective on marketing your, in your business. So take a look at that graphic on the screen. Almost half of small business owners run marketing on their own. Unless you're a marketing professional, there might be a better strategy. So B2B buyers' habits are changing. And nowadays, they're gonna dedicate more time to doing individual research than they will in speaking with you. B2B digital marketing statistics show that 74% of business buyers are going to spend more than half their time researching online. Some popular targets, again, obviously websites, search engine results, uh, video sites like YouTube, social media, so forth. Uh, you may never even get a chance to speak with a prospect if they don't choose to engage with you beyond your online presence. So if you're looking to simply sustain or grow your business, a solid marketing plan is absolutely essential. Next, this is another good one. Who manages your business's IT services? So often we see small businesses managing IT on their own. You know, by that I mean, one of my employees handles things when they aren't doing their real job. That might've been okay 15 or 20 years ago, but today, while programs and softwares might be you know, easier, more simple to use, the cyber world is way more sophisticated and dangerous than ever. Without appropriate architecture and protection in place, not only is your business vulnerable, there's a good chance your team is frustrated by the performance of your IT systems. Slow speeds, insufficient support, ransomware, it all could be costing your business a lot of money. I know a company 
out on the West Coast that was hacked a couple of years ago. There's probably a lot of them. Uh, but this one in particular, their data was held hostage for more than six months. This company lost hundreds of thousands of dollars in sales and productivity, and they actually lost some good employees who were just frustra frustrated by the entire situation and left. So here's some scary statistics I found on techjury.com. Every 39 seconds, there's a new attack somewhere on the web. Globally, 30,000 websites are hacked every day. 64% of companies worldwide have experienced at least one form of a cyber attack. And this, this last one, we should all know this one. Email is responsible for around 94% of all malware. If someone sends you something that you don't recognize and there's an attachment, don't open it. But a lot of us have been guilty of that, right? Let's be careful and make sure that we've got the appropriate protections in place. If you're managing IT on a good enough, it's working today type of basis, there's a likely chance you're gonna end up as one of these statistics. Even having just one person managing all of your IT needs means you probably have a generalist handling it. Ask them what concerns they have and then go talk to an expert in that field to make sure that you're covered. You don't wanna be held hostage for six months or more while someone else is getting your business. Intellectual property is an interesting subject. Uh, IP refers to creations of the mind, uh, such as inventions, literary and artistic works, designs and symbols, names and images used in commerce. If you think about what makes your products, services, or marketing materials truly unique, ask yourself if this intellectual property is protected. I posted a graphic on the screen that demonstrates three of the most common types of IP. But one that isn't in the graphic is called a trade secret, which is simply confidential information that usually involves a company's flagship product or service. It ensures a business's advantage over its competition. Some information to consider regarding legal ramifications of creating and protecting intellectual property. A lot of companies choose to settle immediately when they're sued for patent infringement. This is because the cost to defend uh, against a lawsuit usually goes over $3 million. So for, if you're a company that's making less than 10 million a year, this could crush your business. But here's the flip side. According to intellectual property case statistics in the US, it takes roughly 2.4 years for an intellectual property infringement case to go to trial. Of those that go to trial, about 13% are awarded compensation for damages and losses. So the message here is this, it can be difficult to defend IP claims, but it's also really expensive for both sides. If you have anything in your business that you believe is intellectual property and you're not sure if you should be protecting it, speak with an IP attorney. Protect your valuable IP from competitors and even employees that may be tempted to take that info and cash in on it with a competitor. It's also worth noting that if you're infringing on another business's IP, you might be hearing about it at some point. So do your due diligence when you're creating new symbols, catchphrases, or creating a new product. So the next to last item I wanna talk about is our business on our business health checklist is insurance. Why am I talking about this? Nobody ever wants to talk about insurance, but if you want a healthy business, it absolutely requires protection. Look at that graphic for a moment. Three in four small businesses experienced an insurable event in 2020. When was the last time you spoke with your commercial insurance company about your coverage? You should be doing it annually, even if it doesn't seem like much has changed from the prior year. There could be opportunities for savings, or you may find a glaring hole in your coverage. The bottom line is this, choose a commercial insurance agent that you're comfortable with, that'll help protect your business properly. And if you need any convincing, Here's some data to, to, to consider. So in that list of events that were reported in the Advisor Smith survey I just mentioned, where three out of four had a, an insurable claim event, here's, here, here are the things that we're talking about. Burglary, theft, fraud, employee injuries, client complaints or contract disputes, cyber attacks, data breaches or hacks, employee complaints of discrimination or harassment, property damage from fire or other weather-related issues, accidents with a company car, 
uh, injury or damage caused by a product that you sold, uh, and customer injuries. These all came in between 23 and 33 percent of respondents. That's a lot. And most of those are common to many of our businesses. So let's make sure that we're covered. So the last one, um, this one might, uh, might surprise some of you. Uh, are you doing what's right for you? Are you getting regular checkups for yourself? Everyone watching this webinar has someone that counts on them, family, friends, employees. Taking care of yourself means taking care of the people around you. Just pick a place to get started. There's resources everywhere between doctors, nutritionists, dietitians, personal trainers, uh, and there's a smart device and an app for everything. So how can I possibly attack all of this? There's a lot to do. What do I do first? How can I do it all? The answer is don't. Don't try to do everything at once. Prioritize what you feel is most important for your business. Create a plan, write it down. Seek trusted advisors for support, but most importantly, take action. Be vigilant in improving the health of your business. So last note here, if there's anything you'd like to understand more about business or executive coaching, or you'd like to be connected with any of the subject matter experts that, that helped me put this presentation together today, just reach out to me. My contact info is there on the screen.